Hey guys, welcome back to Just Fixing Garage. I'm Justin. I'm a little under the weather, but I uh, figured I better take my weekend to get to work. So we've got a 2000 uh, Jeep Cherokee uh, that was giving a no crank, no start condition. Um, <coughs> excuse me. It has the inline, I think it's a four liter. Um, essentially the code that it was giving was no cam signal and then no cam or crank signal. Uh, so, so, so at first we thought, okay, probably the cam sensor to start with so we swapped that out um i really didn't notice anything but i didn't I, well i noticed that the magnet was missing off of the uh was missing off the cam magnet i didn't see it down there um but we threw a new one on there it didn't seem to help so we thought okay let's check the crank sensor swap the crank sensor out just in case you know we checked all the wiring everything looked fine and i still didn't start so uh essentially when i finally came in here I really took a deeper look at the cam sensor all right, so, sorry, battery died. But anyway, when I looked deeper at the cam sensor with it on, on taken off, um, I noticed that the middle part is spinning. Um, it's hard to see probably on the camera, but this is what sends the signal to the cam sensor as it spins around and hits the magnet. So um, it doesn't appear that the actual shaft is spinning that goes into the oil drive. It is just this piece, like it's almost come unlatched from what's supposed to hold it. So what I believe has happened here, and I've seen a couple forums and videos that this has happened, either that piece wears out, but also the cam, and it wears out and it starts to wallow out and it can hit your cam sensor, or the magnet, uh, cam sensor itself, like kind of falls apart in there and then it grenades it. So it looks like from our standpoint, the, um, it's called the camshaft synchronizer is gonna have to be replaced because the signal sensor, the signal that spins around is no longer accurate. Um, think of it like a wheel speed sensor same kind of concept and that's no good so we're going to go through and replace this uh we're gonna have to do it the harder way because since there is um since we know that it's not lined up anymore i can't just line up the holes in it and, and replace it i'm gonna have to put this motor atop that center and do a couple other things so um <coughs> excuse my labor breathing i'm like i said i'm still under the weather so let's get into this repair and i'll show you everything we're going to do to fix this the right way and hopefully get this thing to start All right, guys, so uh, I mentioned that we're gonna have to get the motor at top dead center. Um, you can start this a few ways. First, you could uh, take off your uh, coil, which we'll have to do so we pull cylinder one out so we can feel for compression. But I'm gonna start by removing my um, shroud fans here. They're just held in with, right now it looks like four eight millimeter bolts. I'm gonna go through and double check that. Um, but I'm gonna go through and do that and get this all out of my way because I'm just gonna need really clear access to get to the crank bolt so that I can turn the motor over because um, the crank bolt is a, I have this, uh, 19 millimeters. So uh, my goal will be free up some space here so I can both see the crank for the uh, top dead center mark as well as turn it over and then I'll have to pull my ignition coil so that I can find top dead center on cylinder one. Really all I have to do is crank it until I feel air and then once I start feeling the air push out I will watch my timing line to get it to stop at zero on my um, on the crankshaft and I'll try to show you that the best I can. So I'll do that you guys can follow along and let's see if uh, I can get access to this pretty easily. But again I'm just working on these four bolts here. I've already taken out two of them. I'm working on my third and then my fourth. And we can get this thing going. I'm so sorry guys. Apparently my camera was on uh, picture instead of photo when I was trying to show things. So what I did was I, um, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. I um, pulled just my shroud out on the one side. I don't think I really need to on the other side. So save yourself the headache and the bolts. And then I went down there and I can now see um, right where the flashlight is, my timing marks. I'll try to get you down there, but it is a tight spot. Yep, so there's my timing marks. I actually sprayed it with brake cleaner so I could see the zero. The zero is like near the bottom. So now that I have that done, I am going to pull my ignition coil off with the four bolts to hold it in and pop it completely off. Pull cylinder on, which I believe is this front one. I'll double check. Um, pull that out and then start cranking on the crank bolt to the right until I um, start to feel compression come out of the hole. And if I do feel that, that's a good sign. That means that um, I'm getting compression stroke. And then I can just watch the line on the crank that will come around and then stop that on zero. If I go past it, I need to go around twice. Um, but you know, you wanna land right on it. And then when I do, I'll be able to unbolt 
my camshaft synchronizer, pull it up, and then use the alignment tool that came with the new camshaft synchronizer to drop it in dead on where it needs to be. So I'm gonna do that, and then you know we'll see where we go. Hopefully we get this car running today. It's like 13 millimeter bolts. Now the plug is in the back here, so we're gonna wanna pop this up and make sure we're very careful when we unplug that in the back. Or granted, I might even just try to leave it and move this off to my side because again, I don't want to do anything extra I don't need to. So if I can leave a plug that I'm going to, I just need to confirm that cylinder one is up here. So let me look that up. All right, so I did do confirmation that, um, just wanted to look online for the information that cylinder one is the plug furthest up here, okay? So uh, with the coil pack out of the way, again, I didn't even unplug it in the back. I just slid everything to the side with the bolts out. We're gonna have to get that spark plug out up here. Thank you. If you're hearing any gurgling, it's because I'm pushing on this hose and the overflow is unhooked, so I'm losing like a spit full of coolant, which I'll top off when I'm all done. Granted, there's plenty in the reservoir. Alrighty, that spark plug is out again. We only need to take one out. Now you can take all of them out if you want, do a tune up while you're in here. I'm not doing that. Um, if you do take all the plugs out, it will turn over easier for you. Again, not super important for me. I do have access down in here to turn this. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get a 19 millimeter and put it on the crank bolt that's down here, okay? And uh, it's gonna be that big crank there. And I'm gonna turn the motor over and keep my hand over here until I can feel it trying to blow my finger out of the way. Once it does that, then I know we're on the compression stroke, and then all I need to do is go down here and watch for the notch in the crank that will tell me that that's a top down center mark. It's usually it's like a little line or something, so um, let me get to that and then we'll, we'll know a little bit more. Yeah, that's it. Right now it feels like it's sucking my finger in, not blowing my finger off. Which is the intake stroke. Which is not the stroke that I need to do this. You might have to go around two times do this. Oop, now that felt, that is my compression stroke. So I felt it, I heard it, and I can see my notch. So I know I'm on the compression stroke. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. I'll get you a little closer maybe. Hold on. Oop. That is part of the camera piece here. There's a notch. I don't know if you can see it on the crank that I can see way down there that is gonna line up with zero when I get to it. I'll try to get you a better view, guys, but that's gonna be tough. Straight up real tough. <laughs> Cause I can barely see it, but it's there. Now I'm gonna be real diligent at not overshooting it. Definitely can see it. Okay. You might not be able to see it, and I'm sorry, the camera's not down there, but I can't really get it down there and do it at the same time. So, 
Um, hopefully you can uh, see that little notch and getting it lined up with zero on there it should be pretty close. I'm gonna um, check from another angle, but there's a notch and there's a little slip of paint. Now again, I waited till I got my compression stroke and I felt the air blowing out. You can probably hear it in the video, okay? And then I kept cranking until I could see the notch. I could see the notch actually right away, but it wasn't close to my timing marks. So then I need to get that timing mark to line up at zero. That means it's top dead center, zero, on the compression stroke. All right, now I need that in order for the camshaft synchronizer to go in straight. If not, it's almost like with a distributor, it acts as a distributor, your timing's off. Um, so now that that's done, I'm on top dead center one. Uh, I can pull my camshaft synchronizer, hopefully pull it out and drop the new one in. So let's look at the new part and then we'll take the old one out. All right guys, before I get too far into this, I wanted to show you this tool and why it's so important for direction. So if you look at the inside of this, you can see that this spins based off of this oil drive and these gears, right? So the camshaft will blend into this and this hooks up to the oil pump. So this is vital to both touching the cam and spinning the oil pump. But alignment is key because this needs to be at the right spot to tell the car where the camshaft is. So on the factory ones, there will be a hole here, usually on the bottom, and a hole in this top piece. And they'd say, put a toothpick in it and hold it in place and then put the car top dead center like we did. I mean, and you should be able to put a toothpick in the old one and then you can just drop one for the other. However, we couldn't just do that with ours because this doesn't have that hole. And they've changed to use these alignment tabs. The arrow clearly points to the uh, interior of the car and you can't just set it on there wherever, okay? It actually has to go in a certain spot. It's key weighed out so that this can go right there and this is all it moves. So we know that it must get pretty close. All right, so the instructions say top dead center, we're there. Um, pull the old one out and drop this one in. We shouldn't be touching anything else. We're not gonna turn the motor over while it's out. We're strictly gonna drop it in. So let me give that a shot. Not sure how well you can see down here, but I'm, there's a hold down clamp on this camshaft synchronizer that I am loosening. It's gonna have to come completely out because this isn't gonna be just a spin, this is gonna be a removal. And sorry for the bad camera angle, my focus is on the job, not the camera right now, but this hold down is out. Now I should be able to just pull up on this And if we're basing it off um, where it's supposed to sit, this is, you know, like I said, this piece is moving separately. So uh, we've got oil, we're all good there, but um, we have a problem with this top part. So I'm spinning this and this is spinning separate. So that's, our, that's definitely a problem, that's, it's not gonna run. So again, I think it grenaded itself and that worked out. Um, so it looks like I need to get the old gasket off of this. I think the old gasket is stuck on the motor. Yep, so I'll pick that off. And then hopefully the new camshaft will slide right in. The synchronizer will slide right in. I hope so. If not, I'll be playing around with it forever, which I really don't want to have to do. So, okay. <coughs> Let me get that cleaned up. I think I gotta adjust the oil drive a bit to line it up with this. All right, so it's possible that when mine had spun like that, it, it was off some. So I'm gonna adjust the oil pump part to be straight. So essentially I'm gonna act as this and I'm gonna put it down there and I'm gonna twist it to level it out uh, where it's supposed to be, at least according to all the manuals and whatnot because this part is supposed to go in a certain way, so. It's definitely not that. Okay, so I've got to play with this thing a bit, I think I. May have overshot it a hair. Oops. Again, I've got to make sure the arrow points a certain way because that's where my connection point is. And then get all that to line up. But you're constantly playing with the 
teeth on the camshaft. Hmm. Looks like they do have to be a little bit that way. Let me get my flashlight back up here. And the worst thing that can happen to this is I do this and it still doesn't start. Let me see where that need to be. Who is it? Anything. Mm -hmm. There we go, that looks perfect. Okay. And I can't tell what you can see. I need to get you closer, guys. I apologize. Got my kids out here and everything. So uh, now I've got it to drop in. Nowhere top dead center, and my arrow is facing perfectly back like it should, where the connector will be. So that's all a great sign. I feel pretty good about that. Again, I did have to play with the oil drive a bit. I'm thinking when this thing skipped, it may have jump the gun a little bit messed up some stuff or when you pull it out it just turns the gear a little bit because when you pull it the gear may have moved with the old one um so anyway uh, i used a flathead to get that all cleaned up look kevin's here now too i used a flat one to get that cleaned up i dropped it in so hopefully i'm going to be able to put the clamp back on tighten it down then pull that alignment tool off put the cam sensor in plug back in and get that done so let's see how that works out All right guys, so um, you can see the new one is in there. And again, I mentioned that I had to use that alignment tool to get it in there perfect with the arrow facing back. And the reason is because the new ones don't do like the factory does, right? So if you look at this, oh, my Allen wrench fell. Anyway, there's a hole right here and you're meant to line this up together. And what's nice is I can still put it there to see what the alignment should look like. And it is dead on when this is that alignment where that one's alignment is for that spinning piece. So I'm really confident that my top dead center was perfect. The car is exactly where it should be, so that's great. But again, if you get an OEM, it probably will have the hole here and you'll use that as your alignment. You'll put like a toothpick through it or an Allen key, which I didn't, it fell out. Um, put the car on top dead center, which honestly, you could do that. You could do that without pulling a plug if this wasn't broken, because you could just turn the car over till it lines up and then drop it in. That would be fine, but I, I couldn't do that. Um, anyway, it's in there, it's tight. I'm gonna put the camshaft sensor back on, put my plug back in, put the coil back in probably turn it over before I even put my fan back in just to see if it starts. So here's hoping we know this thing's trash. Um, and I'm hoping this will be good because my buddy has moved to Florida and he had to leave this behind for me to fix it until he could get it there. So, all right, Jeff, let's see if we can get it going. All right, got everything uh, put back on. The coil's on, we made sure the boots went over all the plugs. Uh, made sure it's still plugged in, put the plug back in. Kevin's gonna give it a try and see if it'll start. Let's see. There we go. We started right up. Something dark. Turn it off, Cap. Guess what? It's running, which is great. We fixed that. But I thought I had all the boots over the plugs, but one of them's not. That, that, that tick in your hearing is the spark is crossing a gap. So I've got to pull this thing off and guide that one stubborn boot back over the plug. But guess what? It started right up, and honestly, it was purring pretty good. So I think we're good to go. Now, I will say, technically, there's like a computer alignment that you can do too with these. With that alignment tool, I think it gets you like so close that it doesn't matter. But let me fix this up, get my, get my um, coolant uh, fan back in, plug all this back in, and hopefully be good to go. But this is a good sign. This is a doorman part um, that came with the alignment tool. 
it is 682 200 okay it, it slid right in so yeah remember just pull everything off top dead center cylinder one compression stroke top dead center pull the synchronizer out put the new one in with the alignment tab pointing towards the back and then put everything back together so i'm gonna still do that and then i'll summarize at the end but this is not too bad they make it look a lot more complicated in some people's videos i've only taken off like two things yeah right all right so we put everything back together put this bolted in got the plug in got the coil back in plugged in i'm pretty confident i've got all the spark plugs on the boots now i had one that i apparently missed which is that noise we were hearing uh, everything's good i'm gonna top this off with coolant too but again see if it starts up for us kev make sure you keep it out of gear Ready? yep it starts right up yeah that's much better so on this we had a no crank no start so it didn't matter we crank it all day long it wasn't starting but how's it feel kev Seems good. Seems good. I can turn it off. All right, guys, so that's it. We did our camshaft synchronizer. Um, if you're having weird issues and you've done your cam sensor and your crank sensor, take a look at your synchronizer and see if you're able to make it move. Because um, if you can make it move a lot, there's a chance that the gear is torn up or the top piece has given or your camshaft sensor uh, grenaded, which is what ours did. So um, I'm glad to have this good to go. I'm going to send it out and probably take it for a test drive, make sure all is good. And uh, if this help was helpful to you, please like, subscribe, and uh, help me out. We're over 1,000 subs, so I can't really complain. I guess my next goal is 1,500. So, see you guys.